Hey, here's Steve Tech. I'm Steve, and I'm going to give you a little bit of lifter tech today. Now, there is, um, I'm not going to go over every single nickel and dime little thing uh, because there's a lot of information out there uh, on lifters, but some of the, the higher end stuff, there isn't a lot of. And then I'll just give you some other special tech that I don't normally see people talking about and uh, what's affecting things. So, First thing we're going to talk about is we'll just go right to the standard old hydraulic lifter. All right, so we'll start out with hydraulics. Now this is a General Motors hydraulic lifter, no big deal. Uh, this is actually for an LS, so it has um, lifter trays that come down here and grab it and keep it located. Uh, one little thing that people don't really understand is that uh, it, when the lifter is going up and down and rolling on the wheel right here, it really doesn't use the lifter tray. There's nothing there. In fact, a tie bar, in fact, any of these things that keep the lifter from turning is only to keep the lifter turning when it's on the base circle of the camshaft because it could actually, the lifter could actually turn slightly and as it came up on the camshaft, boom, spring pressure would make the thing go perfectly flat and go up and down. It really, believe it or not, doesn't need, hardly need any type of location, very light, very minimal, uh, if the valve train is correct. It just isn't going to do anything um, but because it will go up and down and it will go up and down straight without the tie bar the tie bar is only there to keep it that little bit of potential of twisting when it's on the base circle of the camshaft but anyways uh, that's just a little side note so how the hydraulic roller lift works uh, we'll just go over that quickly uh, not gonna spend a lot of time and then talk about a, a limited trap lifter so if you look right here this is your hydraulic roller lifter Okay, now inside of here, there's a clip that's holding this, and there's your push rod cup right there. Okay, push rod cup, and that's your push rod cup. And then there's this plunger that's underneath it, and then there's a spring that's holding that up. That's why you can push on the, the uh, cup when there's no oil in it, and it feels like a little spring. All right, so your normal lifter is going to have, normal hydraulic lifter has about 120 to 150 thousandths of up and down movement when the lifter fills up with oil depending on the clearances and how good a lifter it is that push rod cup will self-center and then the hydraulic effect of it will keep it from decreasing too uh, decreasing too fast so it has to squish all that oil out of the lifter well it can't really do that very fast so hence it uh, doesn't collapse that bucket, that plunger, and the cup don't go down because it's got to force that oil out first. That's why you'll see if you just uh, have the valve covers off, you roll your motor over and let one valve be all the way open. Uh, leave it there for a little while and that will gradually bleed all the oil out of that lifter. And that lifter will then uh, just be having the spring pressure in it because it's empty of lifter or empty of oil okay so not a big deal and that's why a lot of times especially in, in race hydraulics you start them up and they're just noisy for like just very quickly perfectly normal don't worry about it now a limited travel lifter means that it'll usually only go down uh, about 30 to 60 thousandths will go down instead of that 120 to 150 and so what that's doing is just in case it was bleeding down or and or we wanted to run a bunch more spring pressure on it and we'll kind of talk about that here uh, the spring pressure on it uh, if it does collapse it doesn't collapse all the way down and cause this really weird uh, valve loss or valve lift loss um, so uh, both of them preload pretty much the same uh, the limited travel lifters uh, which are a better, higher RPM deal because we can run more spring pressure on them. Uh, usually preloads is somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 thousandths. Uh, regular hydraulic lifter, the full standard depth will lat or I'm sorry, uh, will uh, preload about 60 thousandths, right around there. All right, so now one thing that you'll see too is that. Uh, actually lifters pumping up or having any problem like that actually is a problem with too light a spring pressure because what happens is if we look at this lifter and 
it's got a little bit of preload and it's riding in the middle of its stroke or up at the top part of its stroke. Um, if it loses control of the valve, so our push rod is right here, all right? So this is our push rod. If it loses control of the valve, this uh, push rod cup tends to go up. So all of a sudden, this push rod cup is up here and when the valve comes back down to close, it's gonna be held open. That's what lifter pump up is. So your too weak of valve spring pressure allows the valve train to float, allows this push rod cup to go up, and then when the push rod comes back down, it's got oil behind it, can't squirt it all the way out fast enough, holds the valve open. That's what lifter pump up is. All right. So there's some thing, a bunch of information out there you can find on hydraulics, pretty common stuff. Uh, you are going to find that in um, really good race hydraulics are pretty much converting everything over to a uh, limited travel. Uh, just because the only reason we're even using a limited travel hydraulic or any type of hydraulic is purely noise. That's it. Just noise. People don't want to have all that, all any kind of clatter, light clatter, especially in cars with a lot with good exhaust. Okay. Now, one thing you can do, top secret, is you can run a solid lifter. Now, obviously, a solid lifter like this is no hydraulics in it. There's no cup. It's just plain out solid. Everything is solid. All right. You can run a solid lifter. On a, hydro on a hydraulic roller camshaft. Yes, you can. I do it. Do it fairly often. You can do it. What you need to do is typically we'll lash the valve at five thousandths cold. You can do it hot. Sometimes you have to be careful with that. But normally I'll lash them up at five thousandths cold. Put a solid roller lifter on a hydraulic roller camshaft. And then we kind of split the difference and throw some valve spring pressure in it, but not a whole lot. Not your normal, um, you know, 700, 800 uh, pounds over the nose and big, big solid cams. But we could be down there in that five, 600. But with the solid roller lifter and a hydraulic roller camshaft, we have this really smooth camshaft with all the benefits of having a solid roller lifter and the higher RPM capabilities. Okay. We'll probably talk a little bit about that uh, more when I go over camshaft low profiles, um, but it is doable and actually is a pretty good thing and works really well. Um, and when you're lashed at five thousandths cold, they're very quiet too. So, and you can actually play with those numbers and sometimes you can get it even quieter. You just wanna make sure that it's not being hung open when the motor's cold. Remember, motor's cold, everything shrinks, the block and head actually shrinks. Well, it shrinks a little bit more because of the mass than what the valve train shrinks. So sometimes it would hold the valve open when it's stone cold. Valves are open when it's cold, thing doesn't start, no compression. Okay. So let's go to the different style of lifters. I wanted to talk to you about that. So we had that hydraulic, pretty easy deal. Has a tray that comes down here, keeps it all located nice. No big deal. They'll also do those in a tie bar style. So when you hear tie bar, this is a tie bar style lifter. This is all pretty simple elementary stuff. They'll put tie bars on a retrofit uh, hydraulic rollers. No big deal for earlier big block Chevrolets or small block Chevrolets, anything other than LS basically. Um, then let's go to the next style, uh, which is pretty common, is a keyway style. But before I go to the keyway style, let's actually talk about, uh, there's a dog bone style, which actually has a plate that goes over the lifter instead of the tray it actually has a what looks like a little dog bone like a little figure eight that goes right here and captures the lifter and remember all that tie bar stuff tie bars keyways slots radiuses that's all just to keep the lifter from turning when it's on the base circle of the camshaft so uh, there's dog bone style don't see those much anymore um, they bolt it down with a plate. Sometimes they look like a little spade, two little clips like this. But uh, don't really see those much anymore. The other way that people really like to do it, and I don't mind doing it, but there is one problem that has always bugged me about it, is a keyway style lifter. So this is a keyway style lifter. Hence, keyway, 
key. Now this keyway lifter eliminates the need for the tie bar because that keyway is riding right in there and keeping the lifter located. Um, typically we'll do this, this is a, a 937 lifter, there's 1062, there's even a 1, uh, 1131 or 1130 lifter, uh, something like that. We'll talk about bigger lifters here in just a minute, but this is the different style of lifter. So this keyway lifter um, isn't bad, you do need to have a bushing for it, so that's pretty common. Higher end motors will have these, uh, like a Jessel or a Crower makes, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Crower does, Iski makes, uh, Keyway style lifters also, uh, diamond like coatings on them. I mean, they're really good stuff, no problem with that. But uh, what I've never liked about them is that all the oil needs to go around this band. So imagine you have 16 of these things, bing, 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 and oil has to come around this band, this really light little skinny band, goes through the oil galley hole, which is fine, and then has to go around another band, and then another band, another band, another band, another band. And you can't take these back out. So now you have this block that's wrapped around that lifter just like this, how are you going to clean out behind that oil galley? It's really hard. If you eat up a bunch of material, you eat up parts, uh, have a lot of fine particles, it is impossible to get all the debris out from behind this because it's all encapsulated. So that's just one of my little common complaints about this. It's not the end of the world, but um, it, it, it can be kind of a bugger. Now, and installing these is not the easiest thing in the world. It's not the worst, but it's not the easiest thing. Uh, a more common lifter at bushing would just be standard bushing like this and it's just bushing the hole but the oil galley still goes all the way through it. I personally like that because since we do so much more endurance type engines I like to have lots of oil going to the valve train. Oil to the valve train cools the valve train, lubricates the valve train, keeps parts alive. That's what we need to do. So I also like to have in my SMX stuff, I'll do them with QA bushings if people want. If they want that, that's fine. But I'd like to have it set up with tie bars. I like the tie bars because uh, as it's, you could have a lifter value failure, could have kind of some kind of problem. You grab this tie bar, yank it out. This lifter sticks in the in a lifter bushing. Where you where are you grabbing onto that to take it out? Where do you grab that to take it out? It is a mother to get these lifters out if you ever do have a problem. Uh, on the side of the road in a cornfield like what we do in drag week, that's a big deal to get that thing out. It sucks. So anyways, I like to use the, the tie bar lifters versus the, the keyway lifters um, just because of those two reasons right there. 